you want to better understand the difference between the WhatsApp for Business app and the WhatsApp API, well, you've come to the right place. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the key differences between the free to download WhatsApp for Business app, which you can find on the iOS or Play stores, versus the WhatsApp API, which sounds a lot more complicated and is typically geared at mid to larger sized businesses. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Megs and every week I release tech tutorials helping you do digital better. Alright, so first let's get to grips with what exactly WhatsApp for Business is. So you guys will notice on this channel we do speak a lot about WhatsApp for Business and how it can help you as a small business owner. So I'm going to link the WhatsApp for Business catalog video, which I think is the most helpful video to watch in terms of the key differentiator between normal WhatsApp and WhatsApp for Business, but let's discuss it a little bit here too. So the key difference is the fact that on WhatsApp for Business you're actually able to host what they call a catalog which allows you to upload your products to a little mini kind of website looking thing which allows people to easily browse your products. This means that instead of using normal WhatsApp where you would have to describe products or link out to your website manually, people are actually able to do that on their own. In addition, you are able to actually use those products as attachments as the business owner. So when you're responding to someone saying, what are the perfect cupcakes for this children's birthday party? You can literally send them an attachment that links through to your product recommendation. So from a e-commerce or mobile commerce perspective, it is phenomenal. In the countries where WhatsApp Pay is a reality, which sadly isn't South Africa and many other countries, but certainly places like India, you can actually then check out within the WhatsApp for Business platform. But at the moment, it's more kind of a cool way to showroom your product from a WhatsApp for Business perspective. In terms of the messaging differences, there are three key additional bits of messaging functionality which are gonna help you get back to your customers that much quicker. The first of which is a greeting message, which if someone hasn't spoken to you in seven days they will receive when they first start messaging your number. Secondly, there's an away message which will let people know that you're offline and that you're going to get back to them as soon as you can. And then also quick replies which allows you to save template-based messages. And then when you, for example, respond to someone with forward slash thank you, instead of it just saying thank you back to the customer, it's actually going to have a much longer response, which means that you're able to customize this and really feel like you're taking the effort and time to speak to each and every individual customer. The WhatsApp for Business app is completely free and as I said, you can download it from the App Store. So the key thing to be aware of is that you can only have WhatsApp or WhatsApp for Business linked to a single number. So you can't have both apps running on one number. So typically what people will do is register a second SIM card and then link that to WhatsApp for Business, in which case you can have both apps running concurrently on one phone. Do you need a dual SIM? Actually, you don't. You just need that second number to receive a one-time pin to verify that that is in fact your number. So what you can do if you're not going to actually split the two out is you can only use WhatsApp for business and actually swap your personal number over. This is literally a 30 second exercise and is totally reversible if you then realize that WhatsApp for business is not for you. So what I would suggest doing is swapping your personal number over to a WhatsApp for business account, giving it a test, running through the functionality and then swapping it back. And then if you You've discovered that in fact it is going to help you as a small business owner to then register that second SIM card. You're then going to put the second SIM into your phone, get the one-time pin and authorize it so that you then have both WhatsApp and WhatsApp for Business running on the same phone. The other key thing to remember is that you can only have one user using a WhatsApp for Business account. So this means that you would physically have to be sharing the phone even if they were for example multiple salespeople. In terms of the difference in the interface, they look almost identical. So when you're using WhatsApp and WhatsApp for Business, the only difference that you're really going to notice is that business settings section, which gives you the additional functionality. But there's nothing that's available on WhatsApp that's not available on WhatsApp for Business. In terms of the messaging functionality and capability, this works in the exact same way as WhatsApp too. So in the same way that you can broadcast message and have groups, that's exactly what's available in WhatsApp for Business too. So WhatsApp for Business is not that spray and pray 
that's gonna really make you bombard people with messaging. It's more about the people messaging you and you being able to get back to them quicker. However, if you do wanna use a broadcast messaging, bear in mind that you can message up to 256 people at a time, but they have to have your number saved in their mobile phone book in order for that message to be delivered. The last thing to mention with regards to WhatsApp for Business is that WhatsApp for Business also has the status functionality, same as WhatsApp, but this is a great way of actually promoting your business without contravening any of WhatsApp's guidelines. The other thing that a lot of people forget is that you can create stickers for WhatsApp and WhatsApp for Business. So I'll pop the logos of my two favorite apps that I use for this, but I think it could be used in really inventive ways when it comes to WhatsApp for Business. Next, let's chat about the WhatsApp API. The WhatsApp API is a little bit more complicated, but we're gonna break it down step by step to make it simple to understand. The WhatsApp API simply does not have an interface. What this means is it's not an app that you can download from the App Store, but instead it's a means by which developers can develop on the WhatsApp platform. This typically facilitates more complicated one-on-one -on -one conversations with customers of a transactional nature. The reason I use the word transactional is that WhatsApp governs its WhatsApp API very closely, and so they are very adamant that you can only use the API for really value-added messages. So this would be things like an airline granting you your boarding pass or letting you know that your flight is running late. It's not anything of a promotional nature, whereas WhatsApp for Business, you will still get away with a little bit of promotion. I would suggest if you don't wanna go through the process of applying to WhatsApp directly, is finding a partner in your area that's able to give you good support. I'll link my favorite one down below, but it's a local Cape Town based company called Boomerang. So what that's gonna allow you to do is actually develop a bot using their interface and they will take care of that messaging back end. So you're then borrowing things like their reporting and their interface to communicate with your customers. And if you do not have development expertise, then this is definitely the way to go. If however, you want to go down the route of having your developers apply with WhatsApp directly, this is obviously a bit of a longer process with more of a learning curve. They are gonna submit company documentation that says that they are who they say they are, and then WhatsApp will review that application and see whether or not to allow them onto the platform. As I said though, working through a WhatsApp partner is typically an easier way to go. Let's talk about the two different kinds of messages that are available on the API. So there's two distinct kinds, and the first of which is called session messaging, and the second of which is called template messaging. A session message is really what it sounds like. So it's the customer asking you a question and you engaging in a session or a conversation where the customer is potentially asking you a question and you are doing a little bit of back and forth to get the customer to the answer that they are looking for. This is in distinct contrast to a template-based messaging, which means that there's more than 24 hours between the previous message that the customer or you have sent and actually you're trying to deliver a piece of transactional information. Bear in mind that all template-based messaging has to be approved by WhatsApp. So even though you may be able to populate things like the customer name, the actual structure of the message has to be approved. Whereas in the session-based messaging, you have a little bit more flexibility, but bear in mind that you have that very narrow 24-hour window. To the end user, it's actually unclear as to whether you're communicating with a WhatsApp for business app account or a WhatsApp API, but you'll notice with API, the conversations are a lot more sophisticated and more often than not, you'll see that verified tick if you're communicating with a WhatsApp API. The final difference that you'll notice is that typically with the WhatsApp API, companies will use their normal landline number, which means that whether you phone them or whether you WhatsApp them, it's almost always that same number. So that's really nifty. The final thing that you'll also notice is that oftentimes the API is integrating with some kind of CRM backend, which means that actually that data is being housed and stored somewhere in terms of not only the conversations, but the customer data that's being given in the session. I really hope that this video cleared up any confusion you may have had between the difference between the WhatsApp API and the WhatsApp for Business app. And if you have any questions, please do pop them down below. I'd love to assist you with your query. As always, I cannot wait to see you guys in our next video so that we can continue to do digital better. I can help you out. I can help you out. I can help